So, quick video this one, but I thought I'd film it because some people might find it interesting. Today I'm going to jack up the uh, Tesla Model S there using my single post portable uh, lift there. So, um, all I'm going to do today is uh, do a brake service and if the bits turn up I'm going to be changing the uh, drop links on the front. So, I'm not going to be working underneath. I don't think I'll feel particularly comfortable lifting a, a, a 2.1 tonne car that's this wide on the single post lift, even though that can lift uh, 2.5 tonne. But anyway, I'm not working underneath, I'm just gonna be working on each corner. So uh, I thought I'd show you how you lift these. So over at the far side, let's just get on the floor. Looking underneath, we can see there isn't an awful lot of clearance between the top of the lift and the battery pack. But that's sort of quite common on all electric cars because obviously the battery pack uh, on proper made EVs that aren't um, adaptions of um, petrol and diesel body shells they do tend to hang quite low underneath so on the Teslas you have jacking points like you do on every car and on these it's a, a an area here about six inches long in every corner between the battery pack here which sits about a centimeter lower and the plastic sill cover here and you've got to jack on these points uh, you've got to be very careful that your jack pad here doesn't uh, touch the battery pack so you don't want to be putting any force on the battery pack um, and because of that uh, these are often too wide and you don't want to let any part of that pad touch the pack so you need to pack this out so you can use a strip of wood or you can buy the proper adapters and these ones have a locking top so you can push it into the slot if i can see what i'm doing well, i'm doing this with the wrong hand now let me just swap hands right so yes it goes in there and then locks and the nice thing is it doesn't fall out and there are three holes and these lock in the two outer holes so you can have it at the back or at the front and there is a middle hole but this doesn't lock on that and there is a similar pad for the Tesla Model 3 and uh, you'll find a lot of them are interchangeable and they sell this type for all the Teslas and indeed you could use this type on all three holes on this car but um, the, the uh, bit here is a little bit too long and it, you find the support isn't on uh, the pad here it's rather on the tip so um, these are specifically designed for Tesla Model 3s and Tesla Model Ys, whereas these are for the S and the X. So yeah, that locks in there. We can then get the pad wound up. Let me just uh, lock that back in because I twisted that then. And there, that's all ready to lift. So yeah, I'd recommend when lifting any modern vehicle, you buy the right adapters, uh, because it just means you're gonna put the force of the uh, lift, or, or indeed just the trolley jack, you're gonna put it in the right place and put all of the lifting force in exactly the correct place and not do any damage to your vehicle. You can buy these on uh, Amazon uh, and many places online. I was actually expecting this car to be too wide and maybe too long to fit on the single post lift here, but actually it fits just fine. So I've uh, put it into tow mode, and what that does is freeze off the handbrake, so all wheels are um, freely spinning, and uh, let's lift it up. So yes, in tow mode there, it allows you to spin the wheels because the handbrake is uh, freed off. And on this lift, um, you can see those stickers there on the end of the arms. That's the center point that a car can't go beyond. And if we look on here, that's about there. So um, that's fine. It's, it's all within sort of spec. Um, the car does lean that way a little bit. Um, it's not flat, but you get that on all vehicles when you're lifting on these. Um, and there's quite a bit of flex here. Um, so yeah, it does take some 
getting used to when it's up high, uh, but I'm used to it now. But in this case, I'm not lifting this any higher. And in fact, I'm going to lower it a bit because I'm only working on the wheels. But yeah, completely safe to be underneath. It just takes a bit of getting used to. And this is the biggest and heaviest vehicle I've ever put on the single post lift. These are um, under 2.2 these are 2,150 kilos, something like that, and this lifts uh, 2,500 kilos. So yeah, all within spec, um, but obviously there's probably quite a lot of uh, leeway in that on those, but um, yeah, I don't think I would want to be doing any heavy suspension work or any banging around standing underneath. But I've got some props um, that I would use if I was working underneath. But in this case, I'm gonna lower it because I'm only working on the wheels and I'm not gonna be underneath the vehicle anyway. So if we look underneath here, we can see the jacking point on the Model S. It's this panel here, and we can see we've got three holes and we're using the back hole. So you can see why you need to use the spacer because your jacking pad here would be touching on the battery pack. So that's your battery pack. Um, so yeah, these are quite narrow, so you need to have that spacer or block or something in there just so you're not to putting any force on the pack there or on your plastic sill here but yeah they work really well so even if you're at home just lifting a corner with a little trolley jack you still want to use an adapter or a wooden block or something to put all the force in the correct place and that's not just on the Teslas that's on many modern cars particularly on BMWs they have little plastic uh, jacking points and you need to put an adapter in there so you don't uh, crush the plastic adapter um, but yeah many modern cars will have a similar setup so i hope you found that useful and um, more videos coming soon